Okay, so today I wanted to show you our art studio and how we're keeping it cool. Uh, we've had this 1974 Winnebago. We got it from Mojo's camp. It used to be Bubba's breakfast. That's why there's toast and coffee and a sausage running on it. <clears throat> uh, we got it for 150 bucks, pushed it into this position, and we've been working on it, turning it into an art studio. The only problem is it's useful when the weather is nice. Uh, in the summer it's just too hot in there because it hasn't been cooled. We have this roof and the roof helps keep the rain off of it and it keeps a lot of the sun off too but still middle of the day it just gets way too hot in there. So now what we've done is added an evaporative cooler. We already have one on our main trailer and now we've added this second one to here. So it's an old evaporative cooler body. <clears throat> The, um, the grates that used to hold the pads were all destroyed, so instead I've put this on, it's a, what is it? It's the, like, like the grill on the back of a fridge, like a radiator. So I cut it in half and was able to get, get it on both sides. And those are the blue evaporative cooler pads. And then this is some aluminum siding. And once I get it off, see inside. Pads are sprinkled from above. The water comes into this tube and then trickles down the pads, goes through this hole in the middle, and comes out the bottom and makes its way into this tub. And inside this tub is a pump. Underneath those bubbles. There it is. There's a pump inside of here and it's pumping water through these small irrigation tubes which make their way up through the front here and sprinkle the pads. This is a float valve and it's connected to PVC pipe that's underneath the ground here. And when the float you know, goes down, water fills up. So this stays filled and that water comes from our pond. So the, the pond system there's a tube from this that goes under the ground here and all the way down that hall, way down to the end uh, where the pond is. And so by being underground, it stays nice and cool. And then this being sunk in the ground, that water stays cool. And it just keeps everything even cooler inside by putting cold water over the pads instead of hot. This is the control for that pump. It's in there, you can change the water. It's for a wattage. It's for aquariums, so you can, there's a pause button, so it'll put a 10 minute pause on it, so you can feed your fish without the food getting blasted all over the place by the pump, but we don't need that feature. And the electrical all comes into this box, and it goes up and through the rafters, and then into this little shed back here. <clears throat> we didn't want to add a cooler um, that took power from our main system, because then if we ran our batteries, we wouldn't be able to heat our normal trailer because we would have wasted all the power in the studio that we don't spend as much time in. So we have a secondary solar system. I'll show you that first. With this cheap, uh, I think these are about $30 charge controller, and just a small inverter, and two 12 volt batteries. <clears throat> and that system is uh, charged by a single 100 watt panel on the roof, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. But this is an Arduino uh, with Wi-Fi, and so this is one of the microcontrollers that we use to automate stuff here. So this one is hooked up to the rest of our system, and it gets updates from our main server, so it knows what to do, and what time it is, and what the temperature is, and everything. And it is hooked up via these small wires here to a temperature sensor in the studio, and so it's watching that temperature and also outside, and when the thresholds are met, uh, it'll start to turn on these relays here. These are eight electrical switches that I can turn on and off via this microcontroller. And it's a cute little rainbow cord is what tethers it to it. So these ones down here are for the evaporative cooler fan and the pump. And we've got some red lights on, so this is saying the pump is on. And these are the three speeds for the fan. And so uh, 
you write code that goes onto this and you program it. So the programming that I wrote, there's a, a function to turn the fan on. It'll start at high and then go down to medium and then low. And right now the temperature isn't all that high, so it's staying on low. Uh, if the temperature goes up, then it kicks up to fan speed two. It goes up from there, fan speed three. So it's, um, it's paying attention to that and it's controlling the fan for us because we're not out here all the time. So if you forget, like, oh man, it got real hot and I forgot to turn on the cooler, you, you're you gonna have a hard time fighting the heat at that point. You wanna get a head start on it. Uh, there's a little breaker box underneath. This thing isn't focusing very well, there we go. For the fan and the pump, some breakers here so I can shut them off if I need to. And yeah, that's the, uh, the automation side of it. Now, <clears throat> well, we got the cooler, it's got the pump, it's got the fan. Inside the studio is the inside of the fan. Right now, just got this plastic tub lid to kind of push the air down the rest of the way down the studio. It's a bit of a disaster in here right now, but. So, yeah, there's a better view of the fan and so you can see by this macrame wiggling that it is in fact blowing air and so now what we've been working on is a way for the air to get pulled out of the studio which is what this is it's a solar chimney it's a big uh, I don't know how big this is four foot I think four or five foot metal tube and it's uh, painted black on the outside and it heats up with the sun and it extracts air out of the studio. So we're able to pump air in with electricity here, but then air gets pulled through the studio and then up that pipe without any electricity. It's just, if it's hot and sunny, that thing starts sucking air. So it's a good passive way to, to extract the air out of here because that's how you, maximize the efficiency of a swamp cooler or an evaporative cooler like this <clears throat> is you um, you want to keep that air moving so I'm going to brave the, the heat and the sun Got a ladder here I'm gonna go up to the roof that there's the solar chimney it's painted black and heating up. It's got a little rain cover on the top of it. And this here is the solar panel. So this is a single 100 watt panel. And then I built this aluminum frame that it sits on. And there's hinges. Came from like a child's picnic table thing that folded out. Really cool little hinges. And then there's a metal bar there that controls the panel and tilts it up and down. And that bar goes through a hole in the roof down below. And I'm going to show you next how that gets controlled. But these aluminum brackets, there's a little foot and then this kind of part here. These I cut down from uh, the aluminum brackets from the RV beneath us. Uh, they, they used to hold up the awning. It came with one of those fold-out canvas awnings. And so the awning was not useful underneath this roof. So we took it off. And then we also took off the supports. And that's what made this panel thing support so now we'll pop back down <clears throat> so that bar that was controlling the panel up through that hole comes down to this linear actuator it's a motor that can move a thing linearly so that, that little carriage that's on it can go up and down. Um, and these are all of its wires here. I currently just have them dangling and, and plugged into a power and I have to operate it by hand. But the idea is that once I finish building a, a sensor board that using, using this stuff here, it can tell what position it's in. Um, then I'm gonna have that Arduino control it. And so you put the code in there and it knows the sunrise, the sunset, the middle of the day, and then I'm gonna use, I'm gonna generate code to uh, have this go to certain positions throughout the day. But for now, 
can show you if I just take these two wires and oops I'm trying to do this with one hand okay take the two wires touch them together and the thing goes up and then if I switch this alligator clip to this wire and now touch this one to this wire comes back down. I got it marked with pencil on there where I'm supposed to put it throughout the day. So to get the Arduino to do that automatically, I first soldered up this board. Kind of see the back of it all there. And so these little sensors are, um, they emit light from one side and then they're watching for that light on the other side. And so if you were then to take something and block it, there's, this is the emitter and the sensor. So if you put something in between there, then it can't see the light anymore. And so it changes the electricity coming out of it. So the Arduino can use that as a sensor. And every time it, boop, boop, something breaks that, it registers as, as a trigger. So what I was gonna do is use these. They came from an old inkjet printer, but I hooked them up and I can't for the life of me get them to work. So I'm changing the plan and no longer using those. Uh, this here is a little switch. So the idea is the, the carriage can move along and there's holes that let the light through and then when it's blocks a hole it knows okay I moved one position it goes a little bit further blocks the hole okay I moved a second position and so using that I can tell where it is and if it happens to go too far it hits this kill switch and stops and this was another sensor up top for a kill switch on the other side but like I said I couldn't get these things to work which is a bummer because they're cool so the new plan is to use this which is a, um, a magnetic door alarm sensor and so you put the this little magnet bar in your door and this thing's on the the wall or door jam right next to it and then when you open your door the magnet that was keeping a switch magnetized inside when the magnet moves away the alarm goes off and so the way that that works is I've already taken this apart so I can Hopefully just crack it open like that. So how those work is these right here. These are reed switches. So the way a reed switch works is when you put a magnet near it, the two little pieces of metal inside touch and the, the switch allows electricity to pass through. Pull the magnet away and it breaks and electricity can't pass through. So if we take uh, this actually came with two reed switches, which is great, so I have an extra one. If I take this out and use it instead on this board, then all I have to do is put a series of magnets on the, the actuator. So as it comes down boop, and a magnet comes over, it will register, okay, I'm in, I'm in this position. And then as it moves, there's another magnet. And so I can count every time it goes off, and I know that I've gone however many positions. So that'll be a lot easier to use than, than these things here. Where there's four wires coming out of this. There's just one in, one out on that. So this is a lot simpler. So that is gonna be the next video. I'm gonna redo this, and I'm gonna keep the kill switch on the one end. I have another one for the other side. It's a momentary push, so if the carriage goes up too far, it'll run into this and stop. And then, yeah, so the next video I'm going to take this thing, get rid of it, get another one of these PCB boards, and we're going to solder on this little speaker and the switch, and we're going to use the reed switches and make a new board so that we can automate the solar panel tilting. And then I don't have to jiggle these wires anymore, I can tuck them all up in there and I've got this ready to connect to them and then it'll go back down and into the shed and hook up to the Arduino. And then, yeah, it'll, it'll move this every day. 
and set it back to point to the east in the morning and then move it throughout the day and it'll face straight up midday and then point far to the west for the end of day. That's the idea anyways. But that is how we're keeping this thing cool. And then hopefully we'll be able to use it into the summer and, and it won't be like dead to us for half the year.